Hello there. Today I'm taking a look at a wine from Charles Melton, a winery in the Barossa. So this is Charles Melton, Nine Popes, 2018. And uh, this is labelled as a Barossa wine, although I would say the importer's label on the back says Barossa Valley. And actually that's wrong because a small proportion of the fruit comes from the Clare Valley. So it's actually from the greater Barossa region, although 98% of the fruit is from the Barossa Valley. Charles Melton started his winery in 1984. And at this time he had a friend who had vineyard with some Shiraz grapes that he couldn't sell. So Charles, who'd been a winemaker for several years for Peter Lehman at his Saltram winery, decided to make some wine himself. In fact, he made a sparkling Shiraz. But at this time, in the 80s, it was an, an opportune time for Charles Melton to start a winery because actually he was one of the people who realised that there were some fantastic resources in terms of old vine vineyards within the Barossa Valley that were being undervalued. In fact, in the 80s, the Australian government had a vine pool scheme in the area. And yet, some of these vineyards were 100 years old. South Australia has never had phylloxera, so it has fantastic resources of old vines. The trouble was that the varieties that were available were Grenache, which was perceived as a variety for making cheap wines, and Shiraz. These were the varieties that had been planted for making Australian port-style wines, and those were no longer popular. People producing table wines were more interested in producing Cabernet Sauvignon and Chardonnay. Those were the flavour of the day, as it were, variety-wise. So Melton, when he started his winery, decided that he would try and work with these vines. Nine Popes as a wine is arguably one of Australia's leading Rhone-style wines. It's named Nine Popes as a nod to Chateauneuf du Pape. Charles claims that maybe his French wasn't so good and he didn't realise that it wasn't a chateau where Nine Popes lived. It was actually the new chateau of the Popes. I suspect that's probably just a, a, a way of getting around the fact that it was a name that they could use that alluded to Chateauneuf du Pape that wasn't going to get them sued. So anyway, Charles concentrated on working with these fantastic old vine resources there. So, so he worked the vineyards differently, reducing the yields, removing irrigation, ensuring they were completely dry farmed. That way he was getting concentrated rich fruit that wasn't suited to making the cheap wine that Grenache had be, become known for. It was concentrated and it was ripe. The style of the wine, the marketing now in terms of calling it nine popes and that sort of thing, all seems to have worked incredibly well for him in the meantime. This particular wine, as I say, is predominantly made from Barossa Valley, Valley fruit. Evidently 70% of it comes from vineyards in the Roland Flats, so, so right in the heart of Barossa. I mean, Roland Flats borders Jacob's Creek, the feature, not the brand. Balance comes from Charles's Kirscher Vineyard, which evidently is 40 years old, and a sm slightly smaller amount, I think, from around the winery, their winery block, which was planted in 1942. So these are all bush vines. The 2% that comes from outside the Barossa Valley comes from the Eden Valley, so it's still within the Barossa zone, so the wine can be called Barossa, but not Barossa Valley. While the fruit from the Barossa Valley is all Grenache and Shiraz, the 2% of wine that comes from, from the Eden Valley was Mataro. So the total blend in this, in the, in the end, ended up as 50% of Grenache, 48% of Shiraz, and 2% of Mataro or Movedra. The wine was aged in barriques for a long period, actually, 30 months. Of those, 70% were French oak, and the balance of the 30% was American oak. 25% of the oak used was new. The wine was fermented. Some of it has whole bunches, some of it has whole berries, all trying to keep the sort of the lovely richness of the fruit. And then during aging, the wine was left with its lees in the barrel for a long period of time. 24 to 28 months, depending from barrel to barrel. It was allowed to settle to become clear and it was bottled unfined. So, let's have a look at the wine, shall we? Looking at the colour, there's an incredible depth there. I mean, actually, it's not quite opaque, but there's a wonderful deep ruby to perhaps slightly purple at the rim colour, despite the fact this is a 2018 and so should have lost a lot of its youthful sort of purple colours there. Swirling it, it's a, it's a thick wine with 14.5% alcohol and not surprisingly it's forming a few tears on the glass there. Perhaps not as many as I'd have expected actually but it's doing so nonetheless. Let's have a look at the aroma shall we? 
The aromas are the combination of that rich ripe fruit and the oak. So you've got a, a rich, almost sort of plum prune sort of note. Almost sort of slightly stewed prune, high toned note there. But that's backed by vanilla and behind that cedar. And there are sweet spices. This is opulent. It's almost sort of like, like a, a rich Christmas pudding with sort of that sort of cherries and dried fruit and you know the high toned almost sort of spirity notes it's almost port like it's a very inviting aroma so let's have a taste shall we there's a delicious richness and ripeness there the wine's got reasonable weight but at the front palate it's fresh and it's red fruit it's showing red Currants, red cherries, cranberry, that sort of almost a sort of fresh red fruit. Then behind that, there's a deeper, richer, plummy note, and that plum is supported by notes of cinnamon and vanilla, those sweet spices, all beautifully integrated there. I mean, they don't stand out as those, you're looking for those. There's a sort of a chocolatey texture. The structure is, is really smooth and supple. There's plenty of tannin. I mean, this is medium to full bodied. There's a, an alcohol warmth to the, to the mid-palate. It's not hot, but there's enough warmth to just round out the richness of that fruit. And again, the, the, it, it's almost like a sort of a dried red fruit, dried cranberry, glacé cherry, those sort of concentrated red fruit notes coming there with lovely ripeness. Finishing off with more of those cedary notes and touches of cinnamon, a sort of exotic sweet spices more on the finish where the warmth is helping to enhance those as they come out of the sort of the, the rich plum prune fruit and the lovely roundness and the juiciness of the fruit carries on to the end which suggests to me that this has got really quite nice fresh acidity and that was what we saw at the start there as well so a wine with power and ripeness but also on the alcoholic end of the spectrum, quite a balanced wine. You know, there's enough freshness there that it's stop it, stopping it from being heavy or clumsy. And there's a nice length to the finish. So yeah, I think that's a really enjoyable wine. That was Charles Melton, Nine Popes 2018 from Barossa. Thank you for watching the tasting. I hope you found it interesting. If you've enjoyed it, do please like, share, leave your comments. That'd be great to see. Do consider following us on YouTube, that would be fantastic to gain your following, um, and then hopefully we'd be able to see you again at another tasting very soon. Goodbye for now.